Hey there, restaurant pros. It's Dave Scott Peters, and welcome to episode 52 of the Restaurant Prosperity Formula. I've been coaching restaurant owners since 2003, and the Restaurant Prosperity Formula is based on what the most successful restaurant owners I've worked with do on a daily basis to achieve their success. The basic premise of the formula centers around achieving prosperity, freedom from your restaurant, and the financial freedom you deserve. To achieve prosperity, you have to follow a very specific formula made up of leadership, systems, training, accountability, and taking action. Today's topic centers around the question of, are you allowing excuses to stagnate your growth? You definitely want to listen to the whole podcast. Let's get started. But first, a word from our sponsor. This episode is being brought to you by Repeat Returns. If you're a restaurant owner of a medium to high volume independent restaurant, multi-unit or franchise operator, and you're looking for a proven and realistic solution to attract, grow and retain customers, then you need to visit Repeat Returns. Repeat Returns is a modern marketing platform created by a restaurant owner for restaurant owners. It studies each customer's habits and patterns, predicts the most profitable outcome for your restaurant every single day, and deploys the marketing to make that happen. You'll never lift a finger. To see if Repeat Returns is right for you, visit repeatreturns.com forward slash DSP. Hey there, Restaurant Pro. Before I get started with today's topic, I want to ask you a question. Did you know that there are additional free ways to get great content on how to achieve restaurant prosperity, implement systems, and make more money that I offer? Make sure you check out my blog at davidscottpeters.com on a weekly basis. There's my Instagram page, David Scott Peters, and the big one, my YouTube channel, where I post weekly video tips to help you run more profitably, and it's YouTube, David Scott Peters. There's my Facebook page, David Scott Peters Biz. That's David Scott Peters B-I-Z, where again, more content gets posted. And there's my exclusive private Facebook group for restaurant owners, and it's called Restaurant Owner Coaching and Support. Now, I bring this up because you really need to join my Facebook group if you want to have free access to me almost on a weekly basis. I do a Facebook Live called Shoot the Shit with DSP. STS with DSP happens every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time on my Facebook page or this private group, Travel Scheduling Permitted. What I do is I ask you to spend about 30 minutes out of your day to get pumped up about the upcoming weekend, get excited about crushing your goals and finding the motivation to be the best you possible. So again, if you like the content on my podcast, you're going to love this weekly live tip. Plus, I answer your burning questions. So it's your opportunity to say, hey, I want access to you, David. I've got a question about running profitably, my managers, mindset, whatever it may be. You get to ask me live and I do my very best to answer it right then and there for you. So again, free access. I wanted to give you a sampling of what these Friday mornings, these motivational sessions can be like on Shoot the Shit with DSP by sharing with you a topic I covered a couple months back. So on this STS with DSP, I asked the question, are you allowing excuses to stagnate your growth? And here's what I shared. So let's get started right now. Are you allowing excuses to stagnate your growth, both personally and professionally? That's a big question, right? Are you allowing excuses to stagnate your growth personally and professionally? What do I mean? Let me give you some examples of what I mean. Personal excuses can be things like, I'm too tired to work out. And that result, by saying that over and over again, you remain out of shape, you probably are heavier than you want to be, and you don't feel good about yourself. Then we've got things like, I'm not good at math. What's the result? Every time you say, I'm not good at math, you make a vote for that's who you are. And it gives you a negative thought process that continues to reinforce that negative belief. So you will never be good at math. Another excuse might be, I don't know how to manage my time better. Well, what's the result? You've raised the white flag. Since you don't know how to do something, you shouldn't even try. Change that excuse to anything you want to accomplish. Now, there are professional excuses, and let's be restaurant specific, shall we? Because that's what we do. I don't understand the kitchen, right? That's giving yourself permission to not go back in the kitchen because you're not a kitchen person. You you don't want to put yourself on a spot where you don't know what you're talking about. This is cause, causes complete abdication of your kitchen and makes you a hostage to whomever is running the kitchen. They could be doing a good job, but they could be doing a bad job. 
you have abdicated. You've given up control to somebody else and you look the other way. Oh, how about an excuse of that Yelp review is from somebody who isn't really one of our customers. Well, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, while Yelp is not always my favorite place to be, I still want great reviews. And I understand there are some bad reviews. And all too often we ignore them. We say the excuse that that's not my customer. This basically says, the result of that is, it says we don't need to look at ourselves and try and improve. It says the status quo is just fine. And I would tell you where there's smoke, there's fire. It could be the one employee that you decided not to let go that is creating bad Yelp reviews, but you felt like you can't let them go. But instead you're tearing your customer down, your business down one customer at a time, but now with social media, thousands. How about the excuse, I already know what to do. The result, basically this keeps you from learning new things. But more importantly, it allows you to not take action because you already know the solution. You could fix things at any time. Then why don't you? Another excuse might be nobody else can do this task. What, what do you mean? It's a task. There's a system, a process, a way to doing anything. If you take the time to document it, to train it, to make sure you have somebody who can do it your way. So the result by making that is it, you're making yourself feel important to masking the fact that you won't make, you won't make the time to train someone else. This ensures you'll never change. So let me give you a little bit of story time here. In my family, and you can imagine in my family, if you've known me for any length of time, I'm kind of a sarcastic person. It's probably an understatement. Well, that means my children are, my wife is, we have a, a high level of humor and, and, and quips in my house when they're home because they're, they're adults now. Well, when someone starts to tell another family member why something didn't get done, one of us, one of us will immediately reply with, you know what we call those excuses. I mean, my kids learned early on that if they gave me an excuse, we'd sit there and say, I don't understand. You're just making excuses of why you didn't do something. That's all it is. An excuse is an excuse. It's kind of like permission to let yourself off the hook. So these excuses that we tell ourselves for personal, these excuses we tell ourselves for business, these excuses we tell others of why we didn't do things are exactly that excuses. Because it's just giving yourself permission to either believe in something negative or give a reason why you didn't do something. And it is just that excuses are just excuses. Depending on how long you've been following me, you may or may not know that, that basically after selling my last company that I started in 2003 and sold in 2018, actually my business partner bought me out. I really didn't want to, but I had to make an analysis. Is this a good decision for my family? So when selling my company, I, I lacked the motivation to do much because I lost my identity. I was the restaurant expert. My company was the restaurantexpert.com. At least that was the website. Uh, I spoke all around the country three to four times a month, uh, developed software to handle every aspect of your business. I did seminars and workshops, created products for training, like my identity was being the restaurant expert, the systems guy, the prime cost guy. And when it sold, I lost my identity. I failed to create other identities. I wasn't working out. I wasn't going out with friends. I wasn't doing anything. I focused in on my children, but it was all my work. That was my identity. And so, you know, you sit there, add to that the pandemic. And the pandemic basically was right when I was starting this new company. So understand when you had hard times, I had hard times. Imagine being a restaurant coach, restarting your business during a pandemic. Well, there were some, a few ways that impacted me negatively. And I allowed my excuses to perpetuate the problems. I put on weight. Well, I wasn't feeling good about myself. Now I've always battled weight on and off. I was an athlete in, in high school. I was a scholarship athlete in college. I was a rower in a D one school. I know what it takes to be in shape and I've been in shape and out of shape, been in shape, out of shape over the years. I'm 55 years old at the time recording this. So I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't have my identity. I allowed excuses to stop me. 
And I had nothing but excuses because I worked from home. So my excuses are, I was too tired to work out. I've got too much on the new business. I've got all these things I've got to do. I don't have time. I didn't have time to make time to do other things. So it wasn't my happiest time, but I allowed the excuses to perpetuate these problems. Finally, I decided it was time to change. I couldn't stand myself. You know, I'm a human being just like you. So I have emotions, I go up and down. Uh, while I don't think I was clinically depressed, I wasn't happy. Let's just put it that way. And I thought back to my days when I was an athlete. I was a rower in high school and college. It had been 33 years since I rowed. <laughs> and I needed to get back in shape. And I knew that that might be something that would fit me. Because, you know, I like lifting weights, but I find my way out of it if I don't have a partner. I'm not a runner. I used to bike, but I'll tell you, you know, that's not the, the best thing to do when it's a hundred plus degrees here in Phoenix, Arizona. So I talked my wife into something I've been looking at for a long, long time. It's an exercise device called an oar board. And an oar board is a stand up paddle board that you put on it a sculling mechanism for a single, which means it turned it into a boat that I could row. And it's the sport of crew. Okay, so two oars in hand, a, a slide, a sliding seat, which in this case, it was your sliding feet. It was a fixed slide, but it mimicked a single. And I got this thing and I went out to Lake Pleasant here. I drove 40 minutes to get there, take it off my rooftop, put it on, put it all together, go out. And I found joy again. I still had my restaurant coaching business that restarted, but now I was remembered, oh, I was an athlete once. I was a rower and it brought me joy to go out to the lake. And from October of 2020 to August of 2021, I went out there three, four, five days a week. And my wife kept saying, David, why don't you join a rowing club? And at the time I was, the pandemic was lifting, we thought, and I started speaking again. And I went to Miami beach, Florida, and I was a guest rower at the club there. And I got into a single and, oh, this boat goes fast. Where the oar board is like a mountain bike, it goes slow. Then I spoke in New Orleans and I went to New Orleans Rowing Club and I got out in a single and, oh, this boat goes fast. Then I contacted the club here in Phoenix, one of them, Rio Salada Rowing Club. My wife said, you should go. I contacted, learned a little bit, didn't hear back. I went to Las Vegas to speak. And I went and rode as a guest rower at the Las Vegas Rowing Club and the bug bit me. Then August 17th, I got back in the water in an eight at Rio Salada Rowing Club. And I have never turned back. I row six days a week at 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. I've competed now in head races and now in sprint season. I'm back in competing in masters rowing, taking my body from at the time, 258 pounds. But when I started the oarboard, I was 268, which is big for me. I'm six foot three. That's a lot of weight. By the time I was rowing for the club, I was 258. I'm now 233. I have conditioning that I've never, I, I haven't had in many, many years. Uh, 33 years, probably, from when the last time I was a competitive rower. And I'm in love with the sport again. And I've got an identity. I'm healthy. I've got another identity as a rower. I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a restaurant expert. And how important it is that I finally ditched the excuse. I finally took action to change my personal life, which changed my business life. Because as a healthier person, somebody who feels better about myself, I'm a better coach for you. See, back in 2003, before I started coaching independent restaurant owners, I also had an excuse. I had a thought out there that before I started my business, there were many other people that I know probably know how to run a profitable restaurant more than I do. Because I'd gone to, as a chain operator at the time, I went to the restaurant leadership conference as an attendee. And there's all these chain people. I'm like, man, these people, Darden Group and, and uh, Melman Group. And like these people were ancestral. They just built these big concepts one after another. And I'm like, man, these guys know so much more than I do. And that fueled my fear to start my business as a coach. It created an action. But then when I decided to take action, 
I formed my company. I formed the, uh, at the time, an LLC called Smile Button Enterprises. Why Smile Button Enterprises for a restaurant thing? Well, my dad died when I was 30, and he was the creator of the, the Smile Button back in the 1960s at the South Jersey Gas Company. So it had sentimental you know, value to me. I purchased equipment to record and, and put on seminars, and I booked my first workshop. Like I just went out there and I did it. I created a product, a $97 product, and I started, I took action. I stopped with the imposter syndrome excuses. And I realized that I know more than my audience will know. Now I will tell you from then to today, 20 years later, I know so much more. But the fact of the matter is, I w take action. Stop letting the excuses stop me dead in my tracks. Somebody else knows more than me. Just the other day, Internally, I've got member mentors. These are my, some of my most successful members that are now helping me help my members get the most out of my group coaching program. And one of my member mentors needed some coaching on how to work with one of our members who was, you guessed it, throwing up some excuses. Excuses like the program goes too fast. Now, granted, it is a 24-week program. Every week, you get one lesson, one homework assignment you've got to do. And it's been created so that it's not overwhelming, but shit happens, or I say restaurant happens. So we extended the 24 weeks to 30 weeks of group coaching, which allows you 30 weeks to complete the program, as well as an additional rest of the year going from weekly group coaching calls to monthly. And the program goes too fast in this person's eyes. It was that they fell behind felt overwhelmed and allowed excuses to say, I'm overwhelmed, I shouldn't do. Another excuse was I already know what to do. If you know what to do, why aren't you doing it? There's a reason why some people join my program. Some is, times it's you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes you know what you're supposed to do, but you need somebody to kick in your ass. Why am I a healthier person today? I know what it is to be an athlete. I was a scholarship D1 rower a division one rower. I was in the height of my career. I was 195 pounds most of the time, 205 by the time I was a senior, 9% body fat. Like I, psh, I was an athlete. I know what it takes, but do you know what I needed? Do you know why I'm more successful now as a rower again? Because I joined a club and there's a coach who tells me when to show up and what to do. So sometimes you may know what to do, but you need some accountability. You need the group to push you along, but you have to participate. But if you throw up an excuse, I already know what to do, then why be in the program in the first place? Another excuse, why do I need those systems when it can be done in my accounting software? Well, because your accounting software is, by the way, a rear view mirror. It's a reactive tool where the systems I teach are proactive. We start with a budget, we budget purchasing, we budget scheduling to go into the week on budget. But when you throw up, hey, my accounting software does all this, you're giving yourself an excuse why I shouldn't take the time to implement the systems. My favorite for restaurant owners, <laughs> I don't have time. Of course you don't have time. That's why you need to get into the program in the first place to have restaurant prosperity, freedom, your restaurant, the financial freedom you deserve. It starts somewhere by taking action, ditching the excuses and moving forward. By the time you're done with the program, you will have a life. You'll have at least two days off in a row, work strategically on your business. You'll have managers who know what to do. You'll have systems, a place to hold them accountable. But if you say, I don't have time, it says you won't make the time. Oh, one of my favorite. I'm the only one that can do these tasks. I'm the only one. You're telling me you can't teach somebody to put in numbers into your QuickBooks if you don't have an accountant. You're telling me you can't teach somebody how to order. You're telling me you can't teach somebody how to write a schedule. You're telling me that you're so all important. No, those are the things that create the prison for you. The restaurant being a prison for you is our, these excuses. Do you understand what I'm saying? Look, I can guarantee you that you understand this member's pain and have probably flashed the very same excuses. If this member stays stuck in a fixed mindset, that these challenges stop you dead in your track, the excuses feed that fixed mindset, and he allows, or he or she allows, the excuses to rule, what do you think that member's results will be? No change. Wasted money in the program, wasted time, whatever you put in, and being very unhappy with 
the way your business is going, where your life is going. Now I'm gonna tell you an update. The good news is this member did make the mental shift. They did drop the excuses and they're kicking ass right now. Like truly changing their life. It was this moment when you finally ditch the excuses that you accelerate your growth. And I couldn't be more proud of this member and the changes that he's making in his business. Now don't get me wrong. We all find ourselves from time to time stuck in a rut and allow excuses to stop us dead in our tracks. Every one of us, we're human beings. The key is recognizing when it happens and making a conscious decision to change. You see, you've got to say, oh, I recognize I'm throwing up excuses. How do I change that to a growth mindset that, yes, there's a challenge, but I can outwork it. I can outspend it. I can, I can learn what to do. I can overcome this challenge. Well, a part of that is to recognize some of those warning signs. One of my favorite is when you start to use the word, but, oh, David, I could put that system in. That's a great system, but, and now the excuse flows. By the way, the moment you say the word, but you negate anything positive. Let me put it to you in an easy way. That's a great shirt, but I'd never wear it. Right? The moment the word but comes out of your mouth, you negate anything positive and you allow excuses to hold you back. So if you've got this word but as a part of your vocabulary and you start throwing it up, you need to get rid of it. How about answering before somebody asks you a question, you answer before that person finishes asking the question. Like you're so hopped on to show why something can't be done. You don't even let somebody finish the damn question. Are you doing that? If so, you're being in a fixed mindset and allowing excuses to tell you why things can't happen in your business, how they won't happen in your business. How about this? When your favorite wine doesn't go well with cheese. Like I'm going to tell you, I, it, we joke about this with me. I can whine with the best of them. Like I truly can complain. I try not to, but I have a propensity to kind of complain about little things and wine, wine, wine. My wife reminds me. So when that wine doesn't go well with cheese and you hear yourself whining, you got to stop yourself. This is something that I have to always be conscious of and work on. So here's what you can do about these things that you notice when you start going down a fixed mindset, when you start to allow excuses to stop you. Number one is learn every day. Again, I gave you a full list of things that I provide you from my Facebook group to YouTube channel, to my blog, to my Instagram page. And there's probably some other things. I got a Twitter account out there, but I don't put a lot on that. Those others are channels I'm going to work on. And, and rumor has it, we're going to start a TikTok channel. With that said, there are other experts out there. There's other places to go other podcasts, other places to be. Your job is to always consume because you don't know what you don't know. The most successful people I've ever worked with understand they don't know what they don't know, which means they have to learn every day. You have to be willing to fail. You're an entrepreneur. Failure is an opportunity to learn. Learn from your mistakes. Now, I hope in my group coaching program, I help you avoid the big mistakes that cost you money because I've already made those mistakes. I kind of give you franchise training for the person who doesn't want a franchise. Here's a proven system. Stop making those choices. Just follow this plan to success. The big one is you need to take action. Stop making excuses of why you can't do something, why you're delayed. Take action today. I don't care if you have a list of to-dos because we always do. You're never going to be have a blank to-do list. What you have to do is you have to separate those things that are important, everything's important to those things that are urgent, that require you to work on right now and take action on at least one of those items. And you're going to feel better about yourself and you're going to move your company forward instead of feeling like, oh, there's too much to do. Excuse, excuse, excuse. Start taking action. Take on a coach. I'm not the only coach available to you. I hope I'm the one you want to work with but you need to take on a coach. That's how I'm better with as an athlete now back, or I should consider myself an athlete again, but I get a coach every year on something, marketing, how to create a better program. Cause I buy speed. Somebody else has done it and somebody can hold me accountable and help me work through their system process, the way to become better. 
It's time for you to change. It's time for you to take responsibility for your actions. It's time that you get everything you want out of life and your restaurant. And it starts today by dropping the excuses. Now, look, I'm going to tell you, if you're ready to ditch the excuses and take your business to the next level, maybe it's time for you to jump on a discovery call with Ryan James. He's one of my most successful members. He's a member mentor in my program, which means he helps other brand new members go through the program and get greater success faster. And he's now taking time to talk with people just like you who are interested in learning more about our restaurant transformation intensive group coaching program. To book an appointment with him, to get on his calendar and get a free video lesson from me, I want you to go to my website, David Scott Peters davidscottpeters.com and click on the link in the upper right-hand corner, which says, watch my free video series and opt in today. That's going to give you an opportunity to one, get the free video lessons from me two, jump on Ryan's calendar. And if after talking with Ryan, you both deem you want to go to the next step, I will give you an hour of my time for free. And I'll learn more about your business, your challenges. I will show you what you need to do to make change in your business, how to drop the excuses. And if ultimately we start working together, I'm not going to let excuses stop you dead in your tracks. I can guarantee you that. So today is the day. Ditch the excuses and take action. Hey, that was an awesome episode. I want to thank you for taking the time to take action on building a better, more prosperous restaurant. Before you go, I want to give you these three thoughts. One, by combining leadership and taking action with systems and training being checked by accountability, you are on your way to creating prosperity for you and your restaurant. Two, I have something I need from you. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you happen to listen to podcasts. By leaving us a review, other restaurant pros seeking out this information are able to find it. I read the reviews and hearing how this information has benefited you does wonders for me. And three, if you find any of the discussions helpful, share them. The more restaurant pros who have access to them, the better we become as an industry. For more restaurant resources or to get in contact with me, connect with me at davidscottpeters.com. Be passionate about what you're doing. Be persistent, but more importantly, become better and help everyone around you become better. And your restaurant is going to kick some ass. If you're tired of not being able to leave your restaurant because no one else knows how to run it, I want to make sure you know it doesn't have to be that way. You can leave your restaurant. It is possible to build a team of people who know how you want the restaurant to run. With these trained and responsible people in place, you can give yourself time away. What would you do if you had time away from your restaurant? Would you sleep better? Would your relationships improve? Would you feel more relaxed? These are all things you deserve to experience as a business owner. It's why we own our own businesses. If you would like to learn how to own a restaurant that doesn't depend on you to be successful, click the link in the description to watch a free training course that teaches you exactly what you have to do. Also, be sure to subscribe to get my weekly tips and watch these two videos to get more information and guidance for running a successful